Welcome everyone. This is the September 20th Jail and Zones call on the heels of EuroBSDCon. So far we have Jan B, Dan L, Goran M, Jamie G, Mohammed N, and myself, Michael. I suspect others will trickle in. And I will lead off saying that it was great to see at least two of you in person just this last week in Coimbra, Portugal. So thank you all who participated, and I've posted a photo that we took at the social event. I'm like, wait a minute, I, should, um, I instinctively wanted to start Zoom and to start recording, but no, it wasn't a formal meeting, but it was great. Go ahead, uh, Jan, you had a comment? Not really. Cool. And uh, Mohammed, it was great to see you too. Yes, it was great to see you all in person. Though I actually met Jan last, uh, last year, but I think he doesn't remember me. And no. I think the count is three. Oh, and Goran. Yeah, Goran. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yes. I left you out of that <laughs> That's list. what I wanted to comment on that yes. you may want to recount. Yes, thank you. Oh, it's okay. There is jet lag taking effect. Uh, anyway, uh, Jamie, I hope you are going to feel great. But uh, any news relating to FreeBSD 14? That was a hot topic, obviously, at EuroBSD Con. Um, yeah. No news other than that we really need to get that uh, RC jail fix in that looks for the include directive. Um, I was waiting on, on a trick to do something, but I could start it. He had ideas of how, how he wanted it done. Ah. That showed he knows how to do shell things better than I do. But. Oh, you uh, let him know. He has an, uh, an ill family member and may not be able to join, but I will ping him. OK. <laughs> Jamie, I looked at the RC script and it's tremendously complicated now there, there is include. Yes. Do we want to brush it a little bit or or just add the include support? I just, it, the RC script just needs to uh, be able to you know, what we were talking about before about not doing anything, not doing something from the include directory if the RC, if the jail comp file has an include thing in it. So it's only going to make it more complicated, not less. The problem <laughs> is we can't remove the old feature flawed as we may think it is now um, because then we break existing configurations. Well, that's why the idea was to only remove the old feature when the new jail.com include directive is used. Exactly. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what we talked about before. Yeah, can't we just remove it? We have to finesse it. That said, uh, Antrenic has quite a bit going on. And if you're able to take a stab at that, that might be best if you're in the mood. OK, I will take a look at that then. I'll. Uh, make a differential and leave him oh. included on it so he can say anything if he likes, but I can put it in. So I'll relay that. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, Dave, have you arrived? Yes, you have. Dave had some bold visions he described at the conference. Uh, and before we dive into that, uh, Dan L, do you have anything to address? To put no. Otherwise, just listening in? Yep. Thank you for doing so. Dave, is this a good time to run through some of your high-level visions for the coming months? Oh, um, yeah, I can do that briefly. So, and it was great to see you. Yeah, it was. It was great to see everybody. Um, so join you. what we've got is a split of activity, people developing lots of stuff in user space, um, wanting features that we need to add to um, the kernel to support it. And what we kind of need to do is move away from the traditional jail tool of scratching your own need and ending up with a point solution that in somewhere between three and five years falls by the wayside and end up doing something where we move slowly and incrementally everything along together so that the solutions we build for example um, are able to 
share the same base file system that's downloaded that work with um, firewalls in a consistent way, not necessarily constrain the way that's done, but do it in a way where things are relatively consistent and easy to use. So part of this um, discussion, a brief discussion at the conference was really just saying, let's get our shit together and um, make a list of all the things we need or I want to do and then prioritize them and find people who want to work on them. Um, some of them are already being worked on. Um, make sure we have like a little document that describes what that feature is and how it works. Um, get those out to the community for comment and where appropriate, um, get funding and support for that. I think there's both commercial and foundation funding available to make things better, um, but it needs to come in as some sort of community supported um, proposal rather than necessarily um, one person's um, awesome vision. So there's lots of amazing stuff we saw at the conference, uh, both in and out of talks. Uh, and this is about providing a little bit of structure and a little bit of momentum, um, more people pushing for stuff into base and so forth. That was it. Okay. And I am looking at the history because we started these calls with a list that somewhat follows that description, and I'm curious how valid it is today. Exactly. Yeah. We did introductions. Do, 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 do. So other comments on that? And is there someone who would like to work with Dave to explore how to frame that? Priorities and takeaways, well, document jail.e, unprivileged launch, to, to do, start, it, all sorts of things. I can maybe post, paste that in there. So my list is a bit out of order. Uh, so the second one is probably the easiest one to add, uh, unless Jamie knows something which would complicate that. I mean, I haven't really looked into dev control stuff, but I you know the second one would be exporting the jail.conf parameters and variables to the exec hooks as environment. Variables. Oh, okay. The second one. Sorry. I just, I just looked at the dev control. Part I'm going to mute and let you drive while I take this. Someone seems to want me really bad. Get him, Tiger. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, the so, libx uh, oh, exporting of jail parameters. That's yep. Converting the jail.conf into libxo form would be nice, but because there's always been a problem with the jail.conf and libxo in the variable substitution thing. Libxo just wasn't, uh, you know, can't wait, do that. libxo is only output. Are you confusing libxo? Okay, and, I'm, thinking, uh, lib I'm probably thinking libxo input. Yeah. Libxo is the output as uh, JSON, XML, HTML, or human readable output tool. Yeah. G they overlap given that uh, lib every uh, JSON object is also a valid libucl configuration. So you can emit using libxo's JSON output and pass it again, although you would have lost uh, the structure. So it's not mm -hmm. like you get back what you, if you add into the parser, what you get is an equivalent uh, data to what you get after lib UCL expanded your input. So what I would uh, like to have is, uh, so first of all, um, access to all the jail.com variables. Now that we have includes, I foresee that people will, other people will, will also come up with the idea where it would be really nice to have um, basically non-trivial shared jail configuration files in uh, jail.conf. And if you have to um, write some annoying shell, script to be added to every exec hook to make the known list of rebels available it becomes uh, harder to use when it should be i think 
So um, what do you mean by non-trivial configuration files? In things like generate a custom DevFS <laughs> rule set for the Beehive guests. For each one, a custom one specific to the name of the jail and maybe oh, even oops. other variables <laughs> in a, a pre-start. Sorry? Someone might have some background noise there. Uh, sorry, uh, there's a uh, delivery for me and I forgot to get okay. a problem. And welcome, Zolo. Um, so what I meant, these are the kind of things I meant by non-trivial. Um, other things I'm interested in, yeah, making sure you properly clean up the any stale mount points before mounting the jail file systems again, stuff like that. Where yeah. you may have to do several steps, you want access to a few of the variables, preferably just all, I would say, just don't. Uh, Use any ones with special meanings uh, in shell scripts, like uppercase path like instead of lowercase path. Yeah. Um, what That's, I do to that becomes an open from... ended mess, though. Not because... really, I would say. Um... Right, right now, you know, I I originally wrote the uh, the jail program to clean up after itself, and you can mm -hmm. see that it does so quite imperfectly. But every step you add to try to clean it up is a step that can fail and needs to be cleaned up from. Yes and no. I tend to write my shell scripts in such a way that they're impotent. And if necessary, they make space to accomplish their next step. So, for example, if the if the ZFS data set I want to uh, make available to a jail doesn't exist, I create it. If I need an, uh, a TempFS and there's already one there, well, I make sure to unmount it forcefully and mount again so that I get a clean TempFS if I want one. Or I leave it there if I don't want one. Both can be appropriate depending on your use case yeah okay so yeah there's there's a thing that comes into it. it's like what but, is appropriate for one person is not for another and when exactly we start doing for things example and, let jamie finish please sorry when we start doing things automatically we are deciding what the appropriate use case is yes for example let's say someone really wants to make sure there are no mount points under the jail route uh, sorry, jail path, and suddenly someone else uh, has a jail with path equals slash, and jail starts unmounting everything under the uh, jail path. Yeah, and, and a jail with mount equals slash is a common thing because you just want non-violent parts of the jail. Yeah. For example, I know. So it's really be careful here. But the problem is, again, the lifetime mismatch in the jail command, that a normal non-persistent jail uh, can die if the last process exits and the jail command has not even a, an invocation to clean up at that point. Even if you have the existing def uh, CTL kernel module loaded to turn def uh, CTL, um, sorry, to turn jail state changes into def CTL messages. Uh, there is no way to run the cleanup step after the jail has already been auto destroyed by the kernel to yeah. only do the unmounting and uh, post something hooks. So basically post stop and release, I think. And there's no way to synchronize that with um, restarting it to make sure there's no overlap either. Uh, Yes and no, there is a way if you observe, uh, implement in your hooks at least a convention uh, yes, to have, hold device some device lock device. on, let's say, the jail route or the, the JIT file or something. Probably holding a lock on the JIT file would be the right way. But yes, you're completely so right. If, 
Sheen. I wonder why no one's ever thought of this before and mentioned it on this call. What? Repeat that. <laughs> Just a, it's almost like you need a state machine. And it's amazing that no one's ever thought of this. Yeah, right. Ha, 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 ha. We started right there on the first call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was my evil I know, I know that Dave is uh, <laughs> trying to uh, poke fun at us. So but, the DCHSM. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah um, but what I found is that while you can have things like, for example, the open BSD EF state D, which is just a daemon to run a state machine. Um, the problem is that if you have multiple state machines, which you quickly will have, it, it's not good enough to have one state machine. You have to synchronize them and tell other state machines about things. And that is one of the problems, I think. In multiple places in FreeBSD, if you automate things, you acquire knowledge about some sub system state and then this information is lost without a good way to uh, inform um, other parts of your automation about it or you, just your single use system. So what we I think need is a kind of uh, event notification uh, yeah, mechanism where you can have multiple uh, publishers and subscribers. It should be local only, it, but it may be necessary to, or at least very useful, to be able to share subsets of the state with jails. I have thought a bit as on the way back from UBSDCon about which mechanisms I know of which could be uh, useful. As I already mentioned, there is the idea of using the or the potential design of using the uh, event file descriptors so that you would have a daemon and you get a event file descriptor wrapped in capsicum so that you can't increment it, but only read and reset it implicitly um, from the daemon. But the problem of having a daemon is the daemon has to be running, it could crash, and um, you yeah, have a hard time inspecting the state because it's not visible in the file system. So it may be uh, worth trying to get away with just a k-event uh, vnode filter so that we basically use a tempfs so that it's always a local file system and never an NFS file system. Hmm. Uh, because those don't generate events as far as I know. So then we, we could just basically have a directory with uh, published messages and attempt here. Writers would create uh, the message they want, close it and rename it into place. And subscribers would be informed about file system changes hmm. on the tempfs, which if all of this works, would have a nice side effect that there is no daemon record. You only have to really create the mount point and the two directories in it. To, uh, make it a pure library interface. Which John, is there something that follows that example already? I don't know. Okay, if you find an example that might help others understand the vision. So the nice thing about using files is that you get the current state basically, mm -hmm. so that you could have a payload, but only the latest one. So the data model would feel, given the right library abstraction, it would feel similar to an MQTT broker where you could wildcard on directories or the um, end suffix or both. Yes, Mohammed, you have a question for him? Yes. There was a similar discussion in the Linux world between uh, Docker and Rocket uh, container oh. runtime. Mm -hmm. Rocket actually followed a, a, a daemonless um, uh, approach, which was at least, well, uh, I don't know the details to be honest, but we can look into there because they were claiming that it is indeed better than a daemon based approach like the Docker one. Maybe there are some ideas there that we can learn from and do it here. If you have any good links, please drop them into chat. I will yeah, uh, try to okay. read up What's on What's the non daemon model? Would you call it? Basically, something like what John is explaining. So, okay, Docker, cool. for example, oh, has a daemon has a daemon to manage the containers in 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 the way that they manage mm -hmm. it. But the Rocket runtime container, uh, sorry, a container runtime uh, followed 
an another approach without demons at all. Hmm. So, yeah. um, Take at least from what Zion explains, looks similar, but yeah. another idea. So, what I what is important to me is that basically subscriptions can be tracked inside of an event loop, among with other events like sockets, uh, TTYs, and other file descriptors and other events. You can basically use K event on so that you can have a unified event loop and and. Especially, you should never have to actively pull, and it should not require a dedicated thread. So, is uh, this getting back to jail descriptors then? Yeah, jail descriptors would be uh, in this uh, model still useful because they avoid race conditions around renaming mm -hmm. and can provide a richer spe uh, jail specific interface. Um, the interface I want, I imagine, would be useful for basically everything which produces or reacts to events. So, the creation of interfaces, the, the mounting of file systems, um, starting and stopping of services, reloading services, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. I found something that might be at RKT, or is that the whole project? Yeah, that's it. With the, that's a short name for it, yes. Project that got archived yeah. I don't know, a year or two ago. Um, it yeah. isn't, yeah, it is. Uh, it lost the battle, actually, of course, against Docker, but uh, I'm looking at well, the OCI runtime, really, wasn't it? There was three there was the Docker thing, the OCI runtime, and Rockets ACI um, yeah. container stuff as well. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm uh, looking for the where they explain the architecture behind the uh, demonless uh, mm -hmm. container management. But give me give me a few minutes. Cool. And did I miss one after while I was briefly yeah, sorry. away? We are getting a bit uh, too deep uh, into things. Oh, well, that's what we're, we're here for. So if we want a list uh, of things to work on, let's get a bit higher in the stack instead of comparing implementation details. So yes, we, but examples uh, are very tangible for those who have never heard these mm -hmm. ideas. Uh, Jamie, do any of these feel right, for lack of a better term? Um, much of it feels right. I you, you start talking about you know the state of I don't remember what it was. It's not not uh, but the state of programs running into the jail. You know. And, and not just out of the jail itself, that's a completely different issue. Or you're talking about starting and stopping of system demons inside the jail, I, I think. Sounds and, like a um, OS level question, no? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I, I do think that mount points in the jail need to be identified in the kernel. Like this mount belongs to this jail. Um, and because if you're talking about running a state finish. machine, the kernel is the jail state machine. It is what has the state of the jails. Anything else is merely a slave to the kernel state. And if but... there are things that we need to keep track of in a state machine way, that means the kernel should be keeping track of them. The problem is that the kernel does not run the state machine, only a subset of the state machine. It hmm. does not run the uh, exec hooks, so it's not like we have a kernel module which will suddenly spawn off a new process with no parents as a demon of and to in, transition in response to things. Um, True, that's which, beyond the uh, level of, of what course we should do. Get a lot of backlash if you even so. Not necessarily. So if you look at the example that I don't know who mentioned it was it Michael that said about um, if state D from. OpenBSD, it provides the um, mechanism for running the state machine, what you put in, in it, and how you decide to transition is your problem, but it keeps track of that. Um, um, so let it's finish. possible to have a generic solution that may help our specific problem. Um, I think maybe. we can um, get there without putting all of this complexity in the kernel. If the kernel only tracks the current state and the desired state and the user state space daemon can pick up on both 
and try to transition the state machine toward the desired state by running it. Yeah, it's it. not necessarily a kernel feature. It, it might be an operating system operating system functionality. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, having the uh, kernel basically track that the the state is in this state and should be in this state would be enough to allow a user space uh, process to uh, run a state machine or any other kind of logic to uh, get it from state A to B. Yeah. Um, Jamie, this is actually what we talked about a little um, at, at EuroBSDCon. The problem, this is maybe an X, X, Y problem. The problem that we want to solve is we're shutting down a large number of jails, like thousands, and mm -hmm. it stops because something happens. And the problem is we don't know what was blocking it. So the operator solution is reboot the entire machine because that way you know you get a clean state. But that that might take much longer than the maintenance window that was intended and the other jails don't get shut down properly. So the another solution from the from the solving that problem is to say, okay, what are the things that normally block? Processes we can see, sockets we can see. Um, Mounted file systems is the one we miss, um, and maybe some other stuff. Um, I, um, I was told this was fixed in fourteen and fifteen, but I haven't done my stress testing of um, to do that. I should do that now that I'm back. So. Hmm. Is there anything else we're missing? That's a great list, actually. Is the uh, is the one to really take care of? So, what is the one to really take care of? File systems. The mounted file, file systems. systems. Beautifully put. I, that hasn't been conveyed clearly, despite being touched on lots but, of times um, over the years. Go ahead, Jan. Okay. Do Jamie, do you happen to know if there's a, even a single bit we could steal for basically this file system is mounted on behalf of a jail to show up in the mount output as a flag, so that basically to tag file systems as Okay, it's okay for the jail to command to to run roughshod over them and un forcefully unmount them. Nothing currently, but uh, yeah, that's the but, idea. Is it wouldn't even else, have say. to be annotated with the specific jail ID or name, unless you have multiple jails um, with the same mount point. And in that case, I would say it would be better to have basically one parent jail which is empty do the mounting and child jails not doing the mounting to run under the jails with a dependency between them well the problem is yeah the parent does or even the other system level does the mounting but the mount point is still for the jail there needs to be a way to give a mount to a jail much like vnet gives a device to a jail or, or like um, to a jail uh why does it have to be like that because it with that way for example in the idea of the ephemeral jail that goes away with its last process yes which is the sort of a lot of this and it's backward compatibility and we have to live with it mm -hmm. then the kernel can say okay this jail is done here is the jails list of attached mount points so or so not them all because they are part of a jail that no longer exists we already have a kernel module of, uh, uh, available as a port to get devctl events for all state transitions of jails as but far as I have But then you need a out. user process. DevD is always enabled by default on the host. Well, not, I mean, you need a user process that's listening to DevD and unmounting the jails before the jail starts again. It is, okay. This is something I think that could be that could be uh, record keeping in the kernel rather than mm -hmm. just telling it to a user process. So to make it atomic, it would have to be an argument to the mount system or n mount right. system call. Yes. Because otherwise you have a window between mounting the file system and updating its options. Fortunately, adding uh, options to the n mount system call is very easy. Yes, because it's an IO vector, right? Yeah. See, now, as a result of these calls, I actually understand what I of X are. So thank you all for that over the mm -hmm. last few months. I of X, can you explain it to we slow people? 
it's an array of uh, pointers and length pairs. Yeah, it's so a key value pair. Key value yeah. pairs in the array where the first pair is the name of the thing and the second pair is the value in the length of the thing. That's abusing IO vectors. <laughs> yeah, that's it, true. It yeah. is. So it oh, it's a special uh, kind to use them to. Key value pairs. Yeah. Yep. You can do it like that, but it's basically an IO vector is what uh, write uh, vectored and read vector take. Yeah. But Nmount started using these name value yes. pairs, and jails just completely actually call the Nmount code. They just they they call the VFS, VFS underscore something or other that does this because it works so well for Nmount. And we talked about you know something similar that ZFS does, but when I was there, Nmount was the one that was doing it. So that's why jail parameters work the way they do. They look a lot like N-mount options. Looks up N-mount option. I see uh, N underscore mount or N-mount? N-mount, just the system call N-mount. Okay. Cool. You see, see you have IO vectors right there, just like set jail does or jail set does. Could you paste a link to that? I'm struggling to find it. Just man to so N-mount. A single I.O. vector is just a pair of base address and length to a piece of memory somewhere. Uh, normally, you don't take a single one because then you could just take a pointer and a length, but you take an array of those oh, pairs under. of addresses and yeah. lengths. And it's not coincidental that the arguments passed to N mount are exactly the same three arguments passed to jail set. So uh, Christoph is working on bringing uh, Netlink uh, support to uh, FreeBSD's PF for future things, or at least wants to do it. I don't know if he uh, <laughs> will find the time because uh, it turns out uh, NVList um, or NVPair is um, not really written for high throughput. And if you want to dump uh, millions of PF states, um, a single message doesn't cut it. And if you have to chum, ch uh, chop it into multiple pieces, it becomes uh, problematic. Whereas a Netlink uh, is designed to support streaming operations. Luckily, I don't foresee a single jail having that much state uh, mm. at the kernel level that we will run into these problems for a single jail. No, I, I don't think we have many users running hundreds of thousands to millions of jails in a single box. Yeah. And the other question is, do you need a, to basically represent all jails in a single message? Or is, is it okay if you can't do atomic operations on multiple jails, which I think is probably okay. <laughs> Jan, you I have strong so. opinions and visions on this. Uh, do you think a proof of concept would be feasible? Um, of which of the parts we've been discussing, Jamie's idea of the of basically adding support for tracking jails for doing mount points. The problem is that, uh, Jamie? Yeah. Uh, there's a chicken and egg problem. I don't see a good solution for what do you do if the jail path uh, has to be a mount point? You have to create to create the jail. It needs a yeah. jail path, so the True, directory so has to exist. Only mount with an option to give it to a jail. There has to be something to uh, so. And so an have, existing mount ZFS point ready? to a jail. Sorry? We have this little ZFS already where you go, um, ZFS create this file system that will be jailed, but the actual jailing isn't done until later when it's assigned to a specific jail. Um, I, I don't know what significant the prior state is actually, um, but first of all, you have to say, I'm going to create a system that can be jailed, and then subsequently you assign it to a given jail. So you don't yeah, know what so that flags? 
Ah, unless it's purely documentation, this will be jailed and it doesn't have any under the hood implementation. Jailed equals on, I think, right? Yeah, I've got I've got one here. Um, so that creates the data set, but it isn't assigned to a jail. And then you've got um, uh, let's see if I can find the same one. Mohammed, thank you for those links on daemonless container runtimes while we're poking up the uh, thing. Yeah, I found the rocket one. Just, uh, just give me one. Great. Oh, you can even drop it in the dark. Jamie, I got a short question. Would you oppose to adding any list to the jail in kernel so we can save the configuration? I'm sorry, adding what lists? NV lists. NV lists. I'm having trouble with that term, NV. So you're breaking up? Yeah. Uh... The question was if you are uh, against adding some kind of Sto uh, basically in memory storage for the jail configuration into oh, the kernel. Okay. Um, Jamie, no. your audio has gone south. If it's USB, maybe reset it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Be fun of audio. Enjoy. Audio. Um, I would argue against making the kernel even in space. Okay, I've taken you. myself off so, of my Bluetooth headphones. Hopefully that will much help. better. Yes, help. much better. Sure. Okay. I'm not opposed to that. I just hadn't done, done, done anything that direction. Um, I don't know if, you know, it would just be a matter of a single large unformatted string that the user can do whatever they want with, which envy list would be among that or a JSON kind of thing or something like that. But no, I, I'm not, I'm not against the concept of something in the jail that's just there for the user space to refer to. And that, you know, there are definitely yeah. uses for it. I would prefer if there was a flat direct uh, hash map, basically, or value map, where you have a printable string mapping to an arbitrary bounded size uh, payload. Yeah. So that you can have, for example, multiple tools dealing with the same jail by giving each of them their own variable. Yeah, Maybe I would, I would actually idea. like it to have it where there would be multiple jail parameters that you can have some sort of dynamic jail parameters under like a jail.env dot whatever. But mm -hmm. technically that gets difficult because I hijacked the, um, oh boy, my memory's going right now, the um, syscontrol stuff for, you know, to describe jail parameters and that's not a very dynamic thing. Uh, somewhat dynamic. Anyway, yeah, there, there are possibilities, either a, a large free text area that you can turn into name value or an explicitly named value thing. One or the other we should have. I would be heavily in favor of uh, name value uh, PLs. In favor? I think you were just... In favor that. of uh, name uh, key value pairs instead of a big blob. Yeah. Yeah, be, because be nice a big have. blob can have only one writer and potentially many consumers, but they have to observe the format the single writer and um, forces on them. So let's say I have a jail manager and I have a whatever monitoring tool. They now have to be tightly integrated if I can have only one big blob mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. them being able to tag the jail under their own name prefix. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely in favor of that. I haven't done any work toward it, but I will. Yeah. At least I've thought about the concept. Jan, is this anything like the beehive use of envy lists for the new config format, or is this completely orthogonal? Um, Beehive and VList, uh, where do the, the dash K 
Envy list format. Um, I thought that, was... that is uh, its own parser. Okay. And I don't know if it's internally represented as uh, Envy list. Ah, okay. Um, I think it's a tree structure internally and not an NV list, but it, it could be wrong. I thought the NV list uh, dependency was only for the uh, experimental suspend presume stuff. Uh, no. Well, it would be. And um, I'll have Let me check. I do have my lab machine upgraded to 14, so it should be... Manual is beehive underscore config, but that could be off topic. I would argue that we would actually like an envy list. What if you want to change... No, it's an that 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 finish. Exact dot run, uh, start, sorry. It's an array. You cannot just store it in a hash map. I mean... <laughs> You can is a huge string, but what's the use of that? Um, right? So at least for the array array like attributes, you would need something that more and more resembles family lists. The problem is that if you want you now have to have a way to patch a tree structure. I will it's probably better at the kernel level to just flatten this out and have exit dot zero dot start exit dot one dot start or something. And the question is, should the exit value even be persisted to the kernel? Why should the exit hooks be uh, loaded into the kernel? Yeah, but what's the downside of any list? What, what are we actually guarding ourselves from? You know, what are we afraid of? Yeah. Hmm. Um, <laughs> the problem is that, for example, um, and, and lists are a bit slow. Okay, they're already in the kernel, probably, but so probably but we don't need it to be fast. I mean, it's for communication and what I'm afraid of is a complex API with lots of ioctals or whatever, we end up using all several new system calls. Um, Why would we? There, there is no point. I mean, you would have to either add or edit existing syscalls, probably add new ones because you want to keep the compatibility. But basically you need one syscall and that is set and get. The problem is, Sorry. what I really, really want to avoid is that you have to do a read, modify, write to update a single variable. So if and we have one we big that? NV list as, conf as stored payload. Oh, I see, yes. Now, let's say you have two things which want to update different keys at the same time. You have a read modify write, so you have a race condition. Now you have to do a transactional API. Great. Yeah. Now you can how does, how does hash helps? Um, it's a flat upper level, and you can have an exec there which contains an NV list as payload if it can contain arbitrary blob values. <laughs> so you're going to use the envy list in something else? No, we're going to use whatever we need and not uh, restrict user space to a particular serialization format it would be my preferred design. Just okay, let me see if I understand correctly. Uh, there's a problem with the race condition in the envy list. And I yeah. can see how flattening the the uh, structure avoids that problem. No. The problem is that you remove the structure and turn it, at least if you have only one NV list, you turn it into a big blob. And if you want to change one key value pair, you have to read out the old one, modify it, and write it back. So but you have, would a, you big... have a big blob. 
That's why Henry List is there. So you don't have a blob. It is always a blob going across the wire. Yeah, across the wire. And when and somebody... the, the system call is a wire. Sorry, Jan. When somebody is using a syscall to communicate to the kernel via set or get, whatever, then it's a blob. Yes, I agree. But once it's parsed and in the kernel, it's envy list structure. It's not a blob. Okay. So, so, so now understand. we need the complex mm -hmm. patching functionality to now you want a patch, an append, a prepend, maybe a regex rewrite of the string value somewhere inside the structure. You open up Pandora's gate to API complexity and all across this at the system call boundary. So just to recap here, I think the core of the issue here is you're trying to develop a solution before you have a description of the problem you're going to solve. And so oh, we're just I have a problem. I'm, I okay. think the point, I understand the point, but we're just going to spend an hour here mm -hmm. going down a rabbit hole without any use cases and without any specific descriptions of what we're trying to solve. And that's much better for us to write down a little bit more detail about what we're trying to do here, some operations that we want to do, and then giving people time to read and think about that and come back and reply concisely. Okay. We already have the jail get and set system calls. Hmm. which take an IO vec uh, array. So it would just these system call handlers could be used to support yeah, the key value where you would have basically a um, jail you set bar. That's a bad idea. Hmm? You just said that's a bad idea. No, no. To set a key value pair, not yeah, but your statement is IOVAC is is not really uh, what's meant to be used as a key value pair. It's not. No, that's not what I said. It's not what an, an IOVAC is more generic. It can be just data. It doesn't have to be a pair. You can use it as a pair. But that's a convention you add on top of what the struct definition says. Okay, can I be more specific? Yes. What I'm aiming at is the saving the runtime configs uh, in the kernel. So what I'm su uh, suggesting is I write a patch that does that, and then let's let's I don't know discuss it. Let's mm -hmm. see what's in there, what's good and bad. I'm going to use Envelope because I think it's a good idea, but if Anybody wants to write a patch on top of it that, that's different, let's discuss those. Or if I magically find time to implement both, I will. Just my free time is limited. That's fine. Can we see some design docs by the next meeting? Homework. <laughs> You've got the opinions, you've really... got the wisdom, you've got the insights. Let's just see so, what it tastes like, feels like, looks like. Uh, for a week, I think I would rather write a patch and see how it works. Right. If it, okay. if it's so, first working, if it's first working for me, I don't mind writing the docs. I just don't think I'm going to have that much free time. Do what you can, but let's okay. not... Go, I think we've mapped this out at a high level nicely. So just please give us something more actionable because it uh, you're definitely onto something. It's not, you know, I don't think anyone's right or wrong here. We just, I, we're all trying to get this solved. And, and naturally, Jamie, I absolutely respect your vision based on your longer term experience of just what seems right. <laughs> so anything yeah, else on that topic? Implemented, huh? Okay. Sorry. He, you say it needs to be implemented. <laughs> okay, keep those thoughts flowing in your own time and report back because you, you're definitely passionate. You're definitely onto something. Anything else on that topic? Um... Good. 
Hold that thought. Zolo, welcome. Do you have any topics to discuss? Do you go by any other names? Uh, no, not today. I'm, I'm, I was listening today. So, oh. uh, Were you by chance in Coimbra? No. The, oh, I I'm, recognize your avatar. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and thank you for the PF wish list as an example. Um, if I can put that in context. Yeah, the list is a bit out of uh, shape right now. That's the challenge with any such list. They rapidly get out of shape, which, uh, yeah. As so. in its shape does not represent the structure of the disk. Ah, that will be hard to find. Um... Yeah, but Michael, given you were uh, creating such a list on almost every meeting, Oh, no, it's I been every it. few years, don't worry, but little bits of it have been <laughs> uh, touched yeah. on. So fleshing it out would be good, but I don't know if the, well, the but, wiki format is good, but not great. So yeah, if, if uh, uh, let me bring that up just to open up his list, um, because sometimes wiki pages are a great example to follow, and sometimes they are a terrible example to follow. So let's take a quick look mm -hmm. at that together. <laughs> Roadmap. Oh, okay. Jamie? Let's see. Yeah. Have you looked over the uh, jail dev CTL uh, kernel module? No, not at all. That's a thing? Yes, there's a kernel module in ports. Oh, in ports, like yes, thing. that's come oh, up over the years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, DevCTL jail K mod. Shoot a link in chat if you will. Because that's come uh, up, but it's never we've never gone very far with that. Maybe we're onto something there. Um, that I, I would really like to see this already existing functionality added to base it was written uh, no it's maintained by pizzamic i don't know if it's all uh, it was in an attempt to basically port something kubernetes like to freebsd and they needed the events mm, the code has been there for a few years and still works oh, it may not me, produce all events we want but uh in my opinion, this functionality shouldn't be a kernel module hidden away in ports. Because once DevD has the events, uh, it can then forward them to whatever other notification mechanism we want. Do you think there's anything blocking what you have envisioned? Is there implementation compatible? If so, hmm? do you no, have uh, you used I it? <laughs> I have used it. I found it useful. I've used it to automate things using DevD. Okay. The module worked for me on 13 and before that on 12. I'm just now testing it on 14 if there are any regressions, but I don't expect there to be because there shouldn't be any new events to watch out for. Another problem around uh, VNet enabled jails is that there are no dedicated DevD events for um, interfaces being given uh, and coming back from a VNet jail or moving between VNet jails. So it's a case where the network interface goes down for some reason, you lose it, but you nope. don't know. No, no that uh, link state changes do generate events. But if I move an interface from the host to a jail with IF config name VNet something, uh, that doesn't produce an event. And even getting and getting it back, I think only so it does produce an event, but just a detach. I don't know that it went away because it was moved to a, now a VNet. So really, I don't know that it moved from the host to a VNet. I don't know if it moves between VNets. I don't know if it comes back that it was received from a VNet. And that's a problem because all of the other configuration is removed on interfaces if they move between VNets. 
So even group membership is lost, so I can't on description, so I can't tag it in any way. Which is a problem for cloned interfaces and renamed interfaces. Because those don't have a stable name I could use. Hmm. So I have to know busy. Follow yeah. the MAC address. And renaming doesn't produce a def D event either. Instead, it only produces a kernel lock message on the system console. There's a printf, of course, in the kernel, then it just lacks the other five lines to build the proper def CTL message. Well, it's really five a five lines. line change. Hmm. But uh, yeah. Add it to your list. <laughs> yep. And do take a look at the Modirium, how we pronounce that talk from, yep. uh, was it Eric on them using, was it traditional jails under VNet jails to get the air quotes best of both worlds? Do you check that out? The slides might be up already. Yeah, they use a wrapper jail to, for the administrative stuff, but a lot of that is only required because the inner jail, if it's tightly locked down, and it's a solution for the problem that you can't, a jail has to contain an almost complete user land wow. to manage its own networking. And there's also the problem that the uh, uh, jail may, you maybe want to have it isolated on the network, but you don't want the workload to be able to change its network configuration. In that case, the wrapper jail makes total sense. The classic mm. case for that is to prevent you changing your MAC address or doing something like that. Um, or um, if you're using DHCP, other terrible things. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Cool. I, I, I think that the, the, the right solution for that problem is like a, a MAC framework thing that just says, okay, you're in the jail, fine. You don't get to change this. That's what. If you have a raw access to raw sockets um, and BPF, you can do other nasty things as well. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. NetMap or whatever way you can net graph. You, there are so many ways you can do yeah. clever things to the network if you have uh, super user yeah. permissions. Lots of them, yeah. But I remember a, there was a patch to enable ping without raw sockets, which would, I think, dramatically lower the number of growth sockets needed in jails. I mean, that's the only reason I I use it in my jails. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of suspecting other users do that too. If they have VNet enabled jails, which are supposed to auto uh, acquire their IP addresses using DHCP, this also needs uh, raw sockets and common DHCP client implementation. Okay, that's one use case, but given that, that it's also used by people for just pinging, uh, monitoring based on ping, I mm -hmm. think it, it will lower the number. I, I can't it remember the, the PR, uh, sorry, but I remember there was something on the list about that. It will... Uh, on a pragmatic um, point of view, it will especially re reduce the number of confused new users clogging up support channels because they can't ping. Definitely. Those are out there. I did a quick search. I think this might be the the PR uh, 26782. Oh, it's not quite... Low number. Oh, paying in jails without low <laughs> sockets. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Uh, when we touch DCP, there is now fail uh, review for importing DCP CD. Can't, what can be done? Uh, I don't want to step over anyone's toes or, or anything, but that's a really handy tool. So what what we as a community can do? 
So that's um, the new DHCPD related to jails? Like, and it's no. used with jails or what? No, just the it's now in port and we're trying to import it into base. Hmm. We, um, meaning, of course, one developer, uh, but I don't know, he's missing right now, got kids or whatever. So is it polite to, to do the re-import and and bring it, bring the reviews up to speed, maybe. Well, yeah, up to you, code. Do you have an example review? I've pasted the link. Ah, to the, oh, thank you. The the for it, and it's from 2019 and hasn't been committed. And uh, since then, there has been a new major version of DHCP CD, which is available in ports. And I suspect it would be very appreciated if you uh, would just update this, if you have the time, to the latest version of DHCP CD. And well, we, Peter, that, that's question. my sorry, that's my idea to work on a, a very loose example of envy list and jails and when i have something while we're discussing it importing the dhcp cd because i personally really really need it it simplifies the network auto configuration to the point where you don't need other tools currently if you're running dual stack with ip4 and ip6 you need a bunch of tools Yep. And this would, among other stuff, uh, really simplify the configuration. You're very zoomed in right now. I know. Now. It's uh, If I zoom on this window, it zooms on another window. <laughs> it's like something is very... Yeah, zoom is culprits. This, to me, looks like a thing where uh, we have a lot of interested parties, but no one feels like they're in a position to say, go ahead, and no one on that list so far has come back and said absolutely not um so this is 22012 why don't i ask again on the developer irc channel and say does anyone actually object to this if not stick it in 15 while well, everyone's occupied with 14 yep. uh, and then we have 12 months for people to discuss whether that's a bad idea or not and um, the I best argument for what? it is that huh. it is a dhcp v6 client yeah. Uh, that actually plays nice with DHCP v4. And unless we're prepared to take in the latest ISC DHCP client with all of that, which is in not um, Capsicum uh, sandbox, whereas this tool from ports is already Capsicumized. So. Yeah, and it plays nice with resolveconf.com. Uh, it's written by the same author. So it kind of integrates into FreeBSD nicely. It's already in uh, Linux and NetBSD. So we know has, it can uh, be done. It also has open uh, BSD support and supports their sandboxing. Yes, yes. I I actually follow Roy for quite a few years since I used Linux uh, because he was a gentle user and I was, and I really followed what he'd done. OpenRC is one of his things. So mm -hmm. when he was capsicumizing and unveiling and pledging to... Uh, the DHCP CD, I really followed and wanted to learn Capsicum myself. So it was an amazing journey and it, it's more secure. Um, no, let me put it this way. It limits itself more than other uh, auto configuration clients. Hmm. Yes, one of the things which is special about DHCP CD is that it is a single daemon uh, for both 
potentially static mm -hmm. and dynamic IPv4 and IPv6 configuration if you want to configure it that way. So it can be by the the daemon handling a lot of dynamic system configuration. So this just kind of stopped in July. It was, that's quite a bit of activity. Uh, it hasn't oh, stopped. Oh, August 11th. It, Here we go. I don't know. Let's just that right was there. their last. Uh, oh, yeah. Hmm. He pushed it to ports, but nobody is really working on getting it into base. I see. Which hmm. is oh, so it successfully landed. So that is that open as a port or as something in base? It's available as a port. Just package okay. and, and PKG okay. install uh, DHCP CD gets you uh, the tool as is, and it works. Okay, got it. Thank you. Given that the original author spent the effort to add capsicum support, you mm -hmm. can infer that they do care about FreeBSD mm -hmm. support because that wasn't a trivial change. Cool. Okay, we're at an hour. Any other topics? Yes, we should get back to Dave's original uh, list <laughs> and stop uh, getting into the reads. So for that list, let's see some architectural proposals. Um, do Doesn't we have, have to a be big architectural work, but something actionable? Yeah. Okay. Would be more well, important I'm referring than to all big the... design questions. Oh, and not design questions. Insofar as you just got right, a whole lot of things for the uh, state machine type so... uh, tracking of file system events. Anyway. Um... And so, Jan, is I that mean, covered by the notion of jail file descriptors, or is that those are completely orthogonal to totally. the other stuff? Okay, cool. Unless we make them, unless uh, Jamie thinks it's he is able to get them in there fast enough that it would make sense to wait with other changes and make them depend on it because it would probably give you a nicer API if you have a file descriptors because that avoids all of the race conditions you otherwise have by uh, addressing things by IDs instead of uh, capabilities. Do we have a volunteer to maintain a list either in a doc or on the wiki? Yeah, a list of these things I do. I'm about halfway through. I started going from the first meeting um, oh, good. Excellent. Dot, and where's that and living? That's a hack MD. Okay. Uh, can I, how do I do the share thing here? Just see this. So, uh, see if that works. Yep. Okay. If the paste worked. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Let's put it Where? into dual view and. There must be a permissions thing here somewhere. So one thing uh, which we haven't spoken about, but which is common to all of the more advanced uh, jail managers is the serialization and exchange format for jails. So we should just add another one for that. Yeah, down the bottom. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, so when we say serialization, are you talking about the metadata, the envy list or something else discussion or are you talking about no. the actual file system serialization like, of the whole like file system and configuration in such a way that you can import mm -hmm. it on another system yeah and, um, so and is... to me that feels a lot like a packaging question so maybe it's oh, reasonable yeah, to yeah. have that happen via packages But is the existing libpkg able to uh, express this, or do we need something else? Yeah, I've got that already. Um, so just sort of a, a brief recap of this list. Uh, if you go right to the top, uh, Michael, seems you've got it open there, um, and you click on the I, the at, at the top of the document, 
the, there's like a yeah exactly the eye ah, the thank you visible stuff so yes. the, this was sort of the original purpose for me for coming to this working group is build a list of desired functionality and then go away and seek development and funding to do that um, that's the sort of the top level goal and what i wanted to do here was get a list of features from the community so first of all that's us where we have a much smaller group of people clean them up short description specification and when we're okay on it then we go back to the mailing lists and get more input um and i'm happy for the rest of the year to spend my time um trying to get a consensus consensus doesn't mean everyone agrees it agrees that most people go that's that's close enough and then in this call to prioritize those things which is basically a matter of saying is someone willing to work on it and do we have funding if they want funding for it um, because if no one wants to work on it then it's not a priority um, <laughs> yeah um, and um, I haven't done what goes into the agreed features yet but I've just sort of been do, do a bits as we doing bits as we go through today um, would you polish that up and push it to say the wiki because a third online document format is not something I desire right yeah, now is, the, the <laughs> main problem with the wiki is it's it's really hard to use so if okay. you want to do something like comment and go yeah this is great or what a stupid idea or um mm -hmm. I need this badly and we'll pay for it yeah and that's what doc says extremely yeah. well as a commentary so yeah. you um, do on google docs as, as well okay I guess. just somewhere somewhat schools. unified <laughs> yeah well it sounds like you have a few passes to make on this based yeah. on past okay I very much look forward to that I think the group does too um, so, so why don't we remove the link there and I'll put it into a Google Doc or okay, maybe cool. if you create a new Google Doc mm -hmm. uh, sure and it all the same and I share it to me I prefer to edit it in the HackMD but can you can you two polish it up in the mm -hmm. HackMD and here I'll say stay tuned and then we decide where it goes just just so we don't have three different spots because then we'll probably disagree and then we'll have a fourth then maybe a fifth <laughs> just keep them coming anyway oh, uh, and we will be immensely grateful for that for a fifth yeah i think we all will okay uh i'll put draft regardless of where it ends up draft list of ideas for refine uh, or consolidation. And the other thing that came out of your BSD content is a number of people who are interested in this area who can't attend this call because time zones or um, other commitments. Yep. And um, yeah, there's some pretty interesting, uh, would have been nice to have more time to discuss actually. Um, are there specific people in specific time zones? Because one thought is now that there's an afternoon slot, we could just flip the meetings and just let people handle that. Maybe, yeah. Like um, there's a one, you know, a, a slot which currently has opens at FFS a few hours later, such that maybe we switch for those people. Anyway. Was I apologize. Uh, I have a real time IRQ called dinner. So I will yeah, yeah, that's say good. bye bye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining. And again, it was great to see you. Going the back. Um, so, Yanka, um, who's XC, by the way, um, is one person, and the other one is um, uh, Luca, aka Pizza Mig. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Young Carr, among his several names, sometimes Michael, has been great about attending meetings. Uh, Pizza Mig, I've not uh, heard the concerns of. So if, if there's a way to help them, maybe reach out and say, hey, what well, would help? I, I think the timing is wrong for him in Europe. Uh, OK. So, but mainly, if we have stuff on the mailing list, it gives people an async way to respond. And I hope for the doc to be exactly that, put in your ideas as topics of discussion, get them discussed, and then just sit back and let, let, <laughs> let this gang handle it. Anyway, okay, it's also lunchtime here, so shall we call it good for the day? Yep. Uh, and yep. Pizza Mig, did I spell Pizza Mig correctly? Um, yeah, it's, it's Luca 
can't remember his last name. Okay. Uh, I'll not put that in the docs, but please make a note to just invite them or CC me and just say, hey, what would work for you? He's author of Pot, um, in case you oh, didn't the know. Oh, yes. Um, Pizza Megas is last name, Luca Pizza Miglio. Uh, pot. Time zone issues. Okay. It is 17 after. Call it good. Okay. Anything else, Jamie, while we've got you? I hope your throat eases up on you. <laughs> um, no, nothing else for me. Cool. I got you ready. Thanks, everybody. Super. Take care, everyone. Bye. It's been very productive. And I'm calling it at 17 after.